Welcome to Busy Bride 101, wedding planning tips for the bride on the go. And I'm your host, Lisa G. McMillan, wedding planner at Exquisite Events and Consulting. When planning your event, one thing for sure you'll need to do is to determine what to offer at your bar. I've invited Bryce Bjornson of Jack's 47 Mobile Bar to guide you. Hello, Bryce, and welcome to the show. Hey, Lisa. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you so much for being here, and there's so much that I want to ask you, but let's just start with this. What is Jack's 47 Mobile Bar? Yeah, great first question. <laughs> we are a, we're a mobile bar company that has a fleet of mobile bars, so we have mobile bar trucks, we have mobile bar cocktail carts, we have barnwood mobile bars. So our whole business is providing full service mobile bar packages to our clients, which are mostly wedding uh, people getting married, wedding clients, but we do some birthday parties and corporate events as well. Visually paint the picture Mm -hmm. for me as far as a typical setup at a wedding. Sure. So um, currently 90% of our events our weddings and 90% of those events utilize one of our mobile bar trucks. So as you can assume, since these are full-sized pickup trucks, most of our clients are getting married at outdoor-centric venues, you know, so not necessarily outdoor venues, but venues that have either a patio or a yard or some sort of area that would be great for the truck to roll up to. Um, so we're talking, you know, barns, farms, flower farms, even, uh, you know, little Japanese gardens um, we, we've done. So, so so let's say, so you're walking up to the bar and it's literally a pickup truck with taps on the side. So they're built in on the bed of the truck. And we usually place a wooden bar out in front of the truck to create kind of more of a space and also to hide the coolers if we're doing cocktails right so we're doing we have ice coolers we have wine coolers um so we put a wooden bar in front that kind of hides any of the you know the the plastics as i say (laughs) because we like to have a really clean aesthetic um and then behind that bar will be either one or two bartenders and then the truck with the taps so we'll do you know wine by the bottle but everything else will be on tap so that's that's local beer that's hard cider signature cocktails which is one of my favorite things to do and of course, non-alcoholic drinks as well. So sometimes if I know there's going to be a lot of people who don't drink alcohol, I'll, you know, craft up a blackberry lemonade or we'll put a kombucha on tap or, you know, even just water. Some people are like, can we just have a keg of water? I'm like, sure, it's your wedding. It's your event. Whatever you want to have happen. So, you know, we always show up about an hour before the ceremony for weddings um, so that we're we're all ready to go once that ceremony ends. So I'm a big believer in having great service for your guests. And so that means being ready to pour once the ceremony's over and getting a drink in everyone's hand quickly. So part of that is our signature cocktails on tap. We don't typically do mixed drinks for weddings. We'll, we'll ask the couple, hey, like, what do you guys want to serve? What, you know, what do y'all like to drink? What do your guests like to drink? And we'll come up with a couple cocktails to honor them on their big day. And and that's a great way to have consistently delicious drinks throughout the night and do it quickly rather than having people wait in line for a mixed drink that may or may not be the same every time they order it, right? Because the bartender's in a rush making it. So that signature cocktails on tap program is a big part of our service for weddings. And I've, it's been really popular with our wedding clients for the past couple of years. What's your favorite signature cocktail that you like to present to your clients? Yeah, well, the ones that have been the most popular are the Carolina Mule Kick, which is our take on a Moscow Mule. So instead of using ginger beer, I actually will fresh press ginger. So I have a ginger juice (laughs) and I add that to simple syrup and add the vodka. And I add a little more lime than you would get in a Moscow Mule. So it's a little more citrusy, a lot more gingery and very fresh and almost spicy because that ginger. So that's been a really popular cocktail. As you know, mules have kind of grown in popularity over the years. So so that's really popular and delicious. And the next most popular drink would be our Jack's Bourbon Cider. So that's going to be bourbon, fresh apple cider from Western North Carolina, uh, a little bit of maple syrup to add some depth, and a little bit of lemon juice to kind of cut through all the sweetness. So that's been a very popular drink as well because 
both bourbon drinkers and non-bourbon drinkers will enjoy it. So it's a crowd pleaser. Uh, it has that local flair of the uh, Hendersonville or Henderson County apples, um, the apple cider, and uh, it's also very well balanced. So those are our two most popular. But I'll say one of my favorites ever was for a June wedding last year, and they loved watermelon. They loved mojitos. So they said, hey, can you make a watermelon mojito? And I said, sure, <laughs> let's do it. And that was so tasty. It, all the guests loved it. It was so refreshing and delicious. And to to have that in a keg and pour that quickly was just, ever, everyone was digging it, you know. So that was a lot of fun. It was tasty. Um, it did take a lot, a lot of labor up front, you know, juicing the two full watermelons <laughs> to put in that keg. But, you know, it was a crowd pleaser and probably, yeah, probably just, it just suited the day so well. Because it was, like, it was get, starting to get warm out and that watermelon was just quenching everyone's thirst. How would you prepare for service during a pandemic if we're still going through this? How do you envision Jacks 47 mm -hmm. pivoting or just being able to be available for your clients in a different way? Yeah, well, we did that this year um, in 2020 regarding a lot of the weddings where we simply masked up and we didn't reuse cups. <laughs> so some people are conscious of plastic consumption, right, as, as I am. And so they would bring back their cup in the previous years. And we just said, hey, fresh cup each time and we'll add masks. And besides that, there's not much else, you know, we can do in regards to, to dealing with that. But we figured that was a good way of of doing what we could. So, you know, to be honest, there's not a there's not a whole lot, but we did take into account the things we could change. One of the things that really fascinates me about the look of when you arrive on site is if someone has hired you to use the classic trucks, can you describe to our listeners what they look like? Because this is not just an ordinary truck. Yeah, that's a good point. They're all classic Mopar trucks. So they're pretty much all Dodges right now, but Mopar does include Plymouth and Fargo for all those who are our car nerds. And so they're these old restored trucks. So they're, they're not rusty at all. You know, they're not like old like that. They're just classic 1947 Dodge pickup trucks. And one of my favorite parts of the looks of these trucks is that they're just so like they're, they're really curvy and, but they still look masculine. You know, like they have a really nice blend of that feminine and masculine aesthetic. And out of all the classic and vintage trucks ever built, I just think these are the best looking ones. And yeah, as I said, the taps are, are right on the side of that, that bed. There's wood panel, um, wood paneling on that bed. And then the taps come out at the center and there's about six taps for each truck. The uh, little baby jack, which is our cocktail cart, has four taps, but we found that six has a great number for building a really awesome bar menu. So typically folks will do two signature cocktails three beers and one hard cider or two beers and two hard ciders. So that seems to be a really good mix for, for folks. And the service piece of it, this isn't necessarily meaning that the guest walk up to the truck mm -hmm. and pulls the handle and they're self-serving at all. This is where you have your own set of bartenders. Let me have you describe that piece. Yeah. So I'm really into the full service offering. Some companies, mobile bar companies just rent out a a tap trailer. So it's like a refrigerated trailer with taps on the side and they do self-serve. But a lot of venues require that you have a bartender who's insured and certified. So one of my big, most important parts of the business is offering a very full service bar package that will create a successful event for my clients. So we have bartenders who you know show up obviously and are very friendly and professional. And I keep a really tight staff of folks. So we, we're not like a staffing service. I don't have a hundred people who I just call up, right? I kind of tailor the bartender to the event depending on where it is and what they're doing. And we do everything from the keg delivery to bringing the cups and the ice and you don't have to worry about a thing. So that's a big part of the package is that you don't have to worry about anything besides picking the drinks. And I find that to be really important because every little chore you have on your big day will add up. And so you might think, oh, yeah, I'll just I'll get the cups on the way to the venue or all, you know, I'll have Uncle Bob get the kegs from the wine store. There's all these little things that add up. And so we just realized that by taking it all on for our clients, they experience a successful day and get to enjoy time with their family and friends rather than worrying about running errands or assigning other people to run <laughs> these kinds of errands. 
Well, it's like one-stop shopping when they're working with you. Exactly. And we even offer client tastings. We have a little private tasting lounge in West Asheville, and it's where all of our trucks live. So you can actually come out and check the trucks out, hang out. We have a couple of leather couches and a vintage stereo, and we have 11 taps here in this private tasting lounge. So that's really fun to do because I started out doing it at breweries and whoever was running the brewery at the time, like whatever bartender was on duty, right? They would be playing all sorts of music and there'd be kids crying in the background because they don't want to be at a brewery. (laughs) You know, there's all this commotion. And I realized I need a private space to interact with my couples. Not Not every wedding pro does, in my opinion, but for me, you know, having them taste those drinks and showcasing the trucks which are so much more impactful in person was really important so i have this uh, share of a warehouse where everything lives and it's kind of it almost feels like my living room which i kind of dig you know <laughs> so you can come and hang out with bryce and uh and try some drinks and see the truck so it's a lot of fun and is i'm one of the only ones who does something like that in this area which is cool and, you know, I always say, if, if you don't care about the bar, don't hire me <laughs> because, because that's all we do. We are a mobile bar company and I'm very into the drinks and I really care. And the people who want, who care about the food and drinks and care about a party really appreciate us and obviously hire us. And that's why we're in business. Yeah, that's, that's our thing is drinks. And that's a great way to be able to taste what you have and figure out what they would like to have at their event. If there's an outdoor event that you're contracted for and there's inclement weather, how is that set up different from any other setup that you have? Yeah, we need about anywhere from, it's about 10 by 20, maybe 15 by 20 feet for our setup. So the trucks are all, it's, it's everything's in the truck. And then as I said, we put that little bar out in the front, but we don't have a generator. Everything's passive. Everything's built into the, the back of the truck. So you don't have to worry about being close to an outlet or putting the generator somewhere where it wouldn't be loud. We don't we don't have any of that, so we don't have to deal with those issues. Uh, in regards to rain, that has been a problem in the past. So what we did is we bought a 10 by 20 tent, which is a bit bigger than what the pop-up tents you see at farmer's markets and other festivals. It's not huge like a pole tent, right, that costs thousands of dollars. We don't have one of those. We just have a little little pop-up but it was yeah it was 10 by 20 um it got damaged in a wedding last year so we're we're gonna buy a new one for next year but but that usually helps alleviate any distance from let's say a covered porch or patio to where the truck would be so let's say they did have a big pop-up tent but we didn't or not a pop-up but they did have a big pole tent but the truck couldn't fit underneath there for some reason we would just simply put our tent from that one to the truck so that's how we've gotten around that. Other venues have covered outdoor areas, so we just simply park under that covered outdoor area. But rain is a problem around here. We do live in a temperate rainforest in the mountains of North Carolina. So the tent is not ideal, but it does allow us to still provide the service when we do end up having some showers. I love that service of being able to just drive up and set up very efficiently without a lot of hooking up as far as to any generators or anything like that. And which you mentioned earlier, it just seems so easy, at least from my perspective, I don't know from yours, but. Totally. Yeah. And one of my first business cards had on it, don't put the keg in a bucket (laughs) because I wanted to, you know, remind people that the alternative is having kegs and big old plastic buckets so which if aesthetics is one of your priorities for your wedding then that wouldn't really fit in so by having these trucks there everything's in the back it looks clean we have those wooden bars in front it's aesthetics are really important to me and even the things where the the beer faucets go in through the wood there's this little ring and typically those shanks you know we're getting more a little technical but those shanks have these plastic things that like are flanges and I was like, no, 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 no plastic. <laughs> and I went out and bought chrome stainless steel ones to put there instead because I really do care about, it's like from the head to toe, <laughs> care about the aesthetics. And so even our outfits, right? We wear the white dress shirts with matching suspenders. So I'm all about really cool aesthetic for, for folks who do care about that. And this is also an opportunity for the couple and the guests to use that vehicle as a backdrop for some of their photos. That's what I thought was so cool in the beginning is people taking pictures with the truck. And as we move forward, I realized that not everyone remembered that. So I would go and bug the photographer and I would say, hey, <laughs> you know, go get the couple, take a picture with the truck because they're going to forget about it because there's so much going on, you know, 
So it's a really good backdrop. Recently, not only until this year, I've had people now taking pictures at night with the truck. So I'll flip the headlights on and they'll go in front of the truck. And we've captured some amazing shots at night. So even if they don't make it during the day, you know, when when it's light out, they can swoop back in. I can turn on those headlights and they can get some really romantic pictures with the truck that are just, in my opinion, so timeless because these trucks have such nice, as I said, such nice aesthetics to them. One of the basic questions that I always get from my clients are, well, Lisa, how much alcohol do I need to purchase? And when I was visiting your website, you have a FAQ just on that. Can you go into that? Because you made it so simple to understand about how much alcohol to purchase. Yeah, there's a couple different schools of thought, but a basic rule of thumb is that you guess we'll drink about one drink per hour per person. So if you just kind of average that out, it makes up for the folks that are going to drink more than that and the folks that are going to drink less. So let's say we're doing a typical four-hour wedding reception, that would be four drinks per person. Some people are going to have six, but other people are going to have two. <laughs> so um, by doing that math, we can figure out how many drinks you need. And we show up with kegs, right? So kegs have a certain amount of volume in them. And if we know we're going to be on the edge of that, we'll bring a backup keg because we don't want to run out. Oh, never. You never want to run out of alcohol. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, exactly. We try to make it pretty easy. And by simplifying the bar menu, you don't end up having so many leftovers. So when people want the typical mixed drink bar, that usually means vodka, tequila, rum, whiskey, and more and, and all the mixers, right? So you end up buying a lot of stuff and maybe only the vodka and the whiskey are the popular drinks. So by condensing the bar menu, by having those simple but delicious two signature cocktails, I found that we don't have a ton of leftovers. It's a very efficient spend in regards to the bar menu. So that, that's a good point is that by kind of simplifying it, it's better because nobody's waiting in line because there, there's only six things to choose from. And But everything on there is delicious and special. Well, definitely for the couple or any client that is looking for easy setup, a beautiful vehicle to be able to produce six taps, a coffee bar, a pop-up tent for inclement weather, you have covered it all. And also, you can take pictures with the truck in your backdrop. So you're offering so much. You're not only servicing the Asheville, North Carolina area, out in Charleston, South Carolina as well. Yeah, we did the big fake wedding in Charleston, December 2020, which was a lot of fun. And we just see Asheville and Charleston as sister cities. So I am working on that expansion. It's definitely a challenging one because it's four hours away. But we are trying to actively figure out how to bring a truck down there and serve those clients getting married in the Charleston area. Yeah, we really want to bring value to folks getting married here and offer it in a really cool and stylish way. And you also offer a coffee bar if the client wanted to have that with their dessert. You have a setup for that. Yeah, we just started offering that last year. And again, aesthetics are important. So I bought these really cool vintage percolators that have these little teak stands and they're chrome so they kind of look like rocket ships (laughs) um and they're just they're nice looking it's like it's not all as i said not a bunch of plastic like it's nice and chrome and uh just looks good and we source local coffee and we can bring all sorts of you know creamers and syrups that you would want again i'm i'm trying to provide great beverage service really for my clients side note i I thought it would be cool to offer an oyster bar at one point, (laughs) and and I realized that was so far from what I was offering that it just wasn't a good idea. And I did it once. I did it once, and it it worked out all right. You know, we we were at the second bar, which doesn't happen very – it's very rare that we're the second bar, but we were this time. So I had enough free time to shuck 100 oysters, right, on the spot because we had a second bartender, and they had another entirely different bar. So it, it ended up being all right. But I was like, if I was the only bar, that would have been a big problem in regards to serving my client successfully. So we did away with the oyster bar, but the coffee bar fits right in because it usually happens maybe later on. And it's something we can easily tackle in addition to providing the bartending service for our clients. If there's anyone who could figure it out, it's definitely you. But I thank you so much for being here and for providing such helpful bar considerations to everyone. And for more information about 
Jax47, please visit the website at www.jax47.com. And you also have a podcast. You want to say us a little something about that? Yeah, well, I was fortunate enough to have you on it, and it's really simply a podcast to highlight awesome wedding vendors and give a little behind the scenes on the wedding industry. So we'll talk about everything from trends in the industry to different venues that are in the area, and it's just a great resource for not only couples tying the knot here, but also vendors looking to kind of engage more with the industry, learn more from others who have been around, and for me to connect and also hopefully uh, useful to others. Rice. This has been so wonderful to hear all the different offerings and to learn more about your business. So thank you so much for being on our episode today. Thank you for having me, Lisa. Awesome. Thanks for listening to Busy Bride 101, wedding planning tips for the bride on the go. To keep up with us and learn more tips, follow us on Instagram and on our YouTube channel at Busy Bride 101. Subscribe to get notified of new episodes and to share with your friends. Always remember... Your wedding is for the two of you.